Good day, good people, and welcome back to the place where we play every Shantae. And we are in the labyrinth of the Hypno Baron, whoever that may be. The third and final Baron, according to my understanding. So once we get this magic seal, things should be getting really interesting. And we're going to get another transformation ability in this place. I'm wondering what it will be. Now, it looks like the game got rid of the harpy and the spider, so I'm really sad about the harpy. That was pretty useful, but I can understand why having to build these maps around a flight ability probably would be a bit of a pain. So, probably wasn't too much of a hassle on the Game Boy since it had those hardware limitations, but yeah, with the increase in power, that would have probably required them to build a lot more architecture in the stages, so you know how it goes. But we're going to be getting something equally cool, I think, if my hunch is correct. We're going to find out. Here's a hint. Lots of water. So. Anyway. I've had to do this a couple of times. Some test runs off screen for reasons like that. This is a pretty tricky place. This part isn't so bad. I just slipped up there not paying attention. But yeah. I attempted this once just off the cuff as I typically do, but it didn't work out too well. I mean, I got through for the most part, but the video ended up being very long because there's a lot of trial and error here. If you're not using a guide, if you're just going through winging it, it's really tough to know where to go because, well, you'll see, there's a particular dynamic at work here with the doors. So I'm going to save every step of the way. Thank you kindly, Mr. Elder. And these guys here are kind of a nuisance but thanks to the super pike ball they go down without too much of a fuss looks like he's summoning up a triforce to attack us don't remember ever seeing it used that way just goes to show how nice what guy link really is you know, power is not absolutely good or evil it's all dependent upon the hands and the mind that wield it just like any good tool. So don't get mad at the tool. Turn your ire towards its user. Little jellos, one pudding short of a pop. And as far as I can tell, these guys work like Mario's dry bones. If that's what they were called, it's been a while. But you can't really kill them. Don't let the tombstone fool you. Okay, game kind of paused there for a moment. That was probably my computer slowing down, so apologies. Yeah. So, in case it wasn't clear, I am playing the PC version of this. Most of the hiccups that I've encountered come from my controller, though. I'm actually playing this with the Xbox 360 controller because the game doesn't recognize my preferred controller for Windows games, sadly. I say sadly because I never quite got adjusted to the 360's standard D-pad. It just never felt quite cozy for my hands. Yeah. I guess I just got spoiled by Sega's controllers. I still maintain that their controllers have the best directional pads, even to this day, especially for side scrollers and fighting games. I'm speaking of the Genesis and Saturn controllers specifically. Dreamcast, not so much, though it also wasn't terrible, just the diagonals weren't quite as good because they were kind of non-existent, which is what most controllers follow, which is why I liked Sega so much. They had the diagonals as actual space on the pad. So it just made for much more seamless motions. And I wish more had followed suit. And I know a lot of folks swear by the Xbox controllers. They say that, you know, it's the epitome of ergonomic design and it's the perfect controller. And, you know, different strokes, different folks. And I, you know, can't fault them for that. You know, we don't all have the same hands, but 
I just know it's tough for me. I, ugh, I just, I do the best I can. So, there are parts in this playthrough where you'll see me struggle a little bit, maybe fall when I really shouldn't have failed or taken a hit. And not to say I'm a great player at this, but nine times out of ten, it's probably going to be due to just me in the controller having one of our little lovers quarrels. It's very much a hate love affair going on here, sadly. Sometimes that happens. Now, if you remember what Bolo said, the elephant can break these statues now. Easier than jumping with it. <laughs> so yeah, there are a lot of keys in this dungeon. A lot of locked doors and a lot of... Okay. And now there, I thought I could land on those spikes safely. Because, you know, on the top there, that's not the sharp end. I thought I could land on that safely. Some games let you do that. This is not one of them, though. No. Mistake for the sake of adventuring, I can live with. And this is one of those examples. See, using the monkey bullet, the inputs are not that terrible, but because I'm using the 360 controller, it's a lot tougher than it really needs to be for me. So, unnecessary hits will happen. I do hope you folks will bear with me. I do prefer to provide more of a good show when it comes to gameplay, but <laughs> hopefully I will improve for Pirate's Curse because that is another game. I did a little test run in the early stages. It doesn't like to recognize any controllers except the Xbox controller, so I will be stuck using this again. So hopefully I'll be a little bit better by then. We'll see though. At least this game lets me reroute the controls change the controller config to my liking. That game, it gives me the options, but it doesn't stick, so I have to go with the defaults, which are not terrible, but, you know, a little customization does go a long way. So, one of the many dynamics at play in this labyrinth, you see those eyes, depending on what direction those eyes are facing, it determines what path you're going to enter into. So, there's a lot of, a guessing game going on in here and you really don't know until you go so this is gonna seem relatively smooth like I know what I'm doing that's only because I've been at this for quite a bit off screen <laughs> things that you didn't want to and probably yeah you didn't need to see now these we've seen before in the original Shantae these levitating blocks so we know how these work wherever it's facing that's where it goes and naturally I had to put the walls in here that you can't climb so that's why I'm going the slow way that's fine time to catch our breath and collect ourselves reassess the situation what are we doing with our lives here all right we're collecting seals preventing an ancient evil I think you know, Mimic didn't really provide all the answers. But I think we can piece it together ourselves here. Let's let's go back and reevaluate. Let's review. Okay, we have a genie here. Half, but still a genie. Magic lamp. Drained of its power. Power will come back with the magic seals. They're called magic seals. A seal is something that does what? Closes off. Locks, prohibits, detains. Magic seal. Seals magic. Genie, a magical being. That's all I'm gonna say. Just working out a little logic. This is, you know, just me going one, two, three with it, so. We'll see how it pans out in the end, though. Because, yeah, this game is very, very short. Even shorter than the original, I think. So, this is the last labyrinth of the game. We don't have far to go. Wait, that actually kind of worked out. <laughs> I did not plan that, but hey, I'm not going to pass up on a shortcut. And... 
options are kind of limited here, aren't they? So up it is. And away we go. Places unknown. What to behold? Only one way to find out. When in doubt, pick up a key. And we're up to three. Just stacking them up here. Uh, this Hypno Baron, he's a. Uh, he strikes me as pretty paranoid person. Very anxious. Maybe you just had too many door to door salesmen, but. Security is kind of tight here. You know, who needs this many doors? And then to lock them all? Who's he trying to keep out? Maybe he had a few crazy exes. Or she, you know? Because Hypno Baron doesn't imply any gender. No telling. Yeah, let's see, that part, for example, that's an example of something that I've done before off screen, so I was ready for it. Your first time going in, that might catch you off guard. It's like, wait a minute, blocks? Okay. Just something to slow you down unnecessarily. Ooh, <laughs> who hit the turbo? Apparently we did. Huh? I died for what was probably one gym. Let's find out. <laughs> oh well, money is something we are still using, so. No regrets there. And, time to cash in these keys, guys. One door at a time. Breaking all pots along the way. Because apparently Shantae has a thing against pottery. There's an active vendetta going on here. I don't know what caused it. I don't know the origin, but it's strong. And it's long. And she's bound to get the friction on. Oh, where am I? <laughs> Baby's got lash. Whiplash. Okay. Mental notes taken. Visuals stored. That is telling us something that we need to remember. For up ahead. And it's going to involve hitting these a few more times. Hopefully I remembered the combination here. I really should have taken the time to just write it down. That's what I typically do. Keep a little notepad handy for situations like this. Kind of takes me back to the old school games. Stuff like Shining in the Darkness. The old Fantasy Star games. Where you wanted to collect Magic Jam? No thank you. You wanted to write out your old maps. In notes. For getting through dungeons and labyrinths. Because if you didn't take the time to do that. Probably going to spend most of your time going around in circles. Looking at the same things. Not being able to tell old from new, because after a while it all blends in. Limited tech at the time, limited palette, limited architecture. Everything kind of looks the same. <laughs> it all just ends up turning into something of a pixelated haze. Tormenting your brain. And this is the clue. Well, this is the puzzle that the clue was alluding to. And we got it. And peaceful transmute, well, not trans, but peaceful music indicates we're going to be powering up. And again, lots of water here. So you only get one guess, guys. What are we gonna get? Perhaps a dolphin? Perhaps a shark? A manta ray? An eel? Oh, no, no, no. Shantae's got more finesse, more grace than that. Of course she's going to become a mermaid. And this is what we've always wanted, right? Who doesn't love mermaids and people of the sea? Move over, Aquaman. You can talk to the fishes. We're going to do you one better and become one. And look at her. 
Yeah, mermaid's a good fit for her. Land, not so much right now. So let's... Yes! Dive into the clear blue. Where she is much more quick. And able and agile. Though, does agility apply to swimming? I don't know. <laughs> Just flopping about. I'm okay with this. And now that we have that ability, much more of the world is going to open up to us. Much like when we got the harpy power up in the original, except the directions have flipped on their end. Instead of going upward, we're going to be going downwards into all the watery depths. And I can think of at least a couple areas in the game like that. In the first area, there was a dungeon that had some water in it. So I'm wondering if it was hiding something down there. Probably just more magic gems, since that stuff is all over. But I did finally figure out what the magic gem does. It's sad, but it actually, for some unknown reason that I can't figure out, it... Yeah, and I actually had to reload from a save, that's why everything here respawn normally it doesn't do that in your playthrough of the same dungeon but the magic jam is what allows you to buy higher end weapons and items it's what lets you get the upgrades i thought it was just dependent on your money but you need the money and you have to have a certain number of jams very unique system there i'm not sure why they felt the need to put that in there but it's there that's what it does that's its thing. Who am I to question? The neighbors are getting louder. Might not be recording from too much longer. <laughs> I know I can't be that loud. But. Alright. So we're going to bust down the wall here. And. Try not to fall. We did it. This is where we want it to be. Heard like a little Metroid in your Castlevania, so there you go. Never such things too much backtracking around. I hope not, because that's what we're doing. Bad bar up. Bad bar down. And just because I can. I apologize if all that shape-shifting has given anybody a mild headache. I know my lobes are rattling around right now. But it was necessary. We have the bottom half of a skull. Not a key, but it's gonna end up working the same way. So we found a bottom half. I guess we have to find a top half. That's how these things usually pan out. So let's look into that. And before this gets too involved, I think we're going to end it here. Please join me next time where we finish the labyrinth and see what's up with this Hypno Baron. Until then, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you soon.